Do you know the secret to getting that super put together clean girl look? Well, it's actually being clean. In my 22 years of being on this planet, I have collected some wisdom on how to not only look clean, but be clean. These are my five beauty hygiene habits that have changed my life and will change yours too if you decide to adopt them. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So I'm gonna come across as a little bit of a broken record. Don't hate me, please, <laughs> because I always talk about this in my videos, but I'm gonna say it again here because it's that important. You need to have a very thorough face washing routine. You need to be washing your face for longer than you think. I'm just gonna make a generalization here and say that I think most people don't know how to wash their face properly. And trust me, I used to be one of those people. I would just take like a pump of my cleanser, wash my face for like five seconds and then rinse it off. But you do not wanna do this. Part of that clean girl look is having really good skin. And you can't have really good skin if you're not washing your face. When I started to actually take the time to properly properly cleanse my face and get into every little nook and cranny, I stopped having breakouts. I know getting ready in the mornings and washing up at night can seem like a chore. And for me, it can also be a hassle, but it is so, so, so important to make sure that you're taking the time to cleanse your skin in the morning, to get rid of any debris and to prepare for the products you're about to put on and to wash it at night so that when you're sleeping, your pores aren't getting clogged. You probably heard the term double cleansing all over the internet and I'm gonna hype it up because because when I started double cleansing, not just when I wear makeup, but every single day, I stopped getting pimples, my skin texture got so smooth, and my skin just looked so much cleaner. So when I wash my face, I like to start out by washing my hands first because you don't wanna be touching your face with your nasty hands, that's disgusting. <laughs> So after I wash my hands, I'll then dry them because you don't wanna be mixing water in with your oil cleanser. Oil and water do not like to mix, so your oil cleanser is not gonna be as effective if your hands are wet. So then I'll take a couple pumps of my oil cleanser and then massage it into my dry skin. And I like to massage this for at least two minutes to really get in there. I go all over my nose, especially the tip because I got a lot of blackheads there. I go on my chin, my cheeks, my eyes, my forehead, literally everywhere, do not miss a spot. So after I've incorporated the oil into my skin, I'll rinse my hands and then take some of that water, not like a huge amount, but I'll take a little bit that's left on my hands and then start emulsifying the oil. Basically this ensures that when you rinse off your face completely, all the oil is removed because again, oil and water do not like to mix. So if you don't slowly incorporate the water into your skin, the oil is gonna have a hard time leaving. After I've rinsed everything off, I'll then take a foaming cleanser, preferably one that's a little bit exfoliating and then massage that into my skin again for at least like a minute. I like to take my fingers and rub it in circles back and forth, making sure I get into every little crevice. And then this is where some people get confused because they think the oil cleanser was the first cleanser and then the foaming cleanser was the second, but that is not the case. The oil cleanser is your makeup remover. The actual double cleansing is the second cleanser you use after the first one. So then I'll take another cleanser, like one that's gel based, and then lather it up, massage it into my skin, massage it for, again, at least another minute, and then rinse everything off. In total, I think I spend about like five minutes washing my face, but I get the most clean, smooth skin ever that it is totally worth it. And I don't even mind that my hairline gets drenched in the process. All right, so moving on from the face, we're gonna stay in the bathroom, but we're gonna move on to our teeth. And I'm gonna be talking about this little guy. If you don't have this, like you need to get one. The water flosser is the best invention to ever happen to mankind. First of all, if you aren't flossing every day, what are you even doing? If you don't floss, food can get stuck in between your teeth and then bacteria accumulates causing bad breath and gum disease, both of which are not very sexy. And second, it's 2024, you need to cop this and get rid of the regular stuff. Guys, I was a flossing thread gal myself. I never thought I needed a water flosser. Like it always just seemed like one of those excessively bougie things that was kind of unnecessary. But when I got this as a gift, my whole life changed. The amount of stuff that came out of my teeth was absolutely disgusting. I had no idea how much food I was missing whenever I flossed. This gets into every nook and cranny. It's insane and ensures that your breath don't stink. This is also so easy and super convenient to use. Like you just open up the back door here, fill it up, 
and then it shoots the water like in between your teeth pushing out all the gunk like to me this is really fun to use it's like a little squirt gun and i find it very satisfying to see all the little bits come out in the sink so if you skip flossing because you think it's a chore get this and you will never be annoyed at having to floss again you'll also have fabulous oral hygiene so the next beauty hygiene habit i have for you guys is wash your sheets regularly okay don't judge me on this one but i used to not wash my bed sheets that often i used to be a night shower person and so my logic was if i get into bed already clean then my bed never gets dirty right wrong when we sleep we sweat lose hair shed skin cells drool you name it if your head is rubbing on a pillow all night and your face touches it oils are going to get on your skin but it's not just that like our actual hair is dirty you do not want your face touching it so if you're experiencing a lot of breakouts or acne you need to be washing your sheets often to be honest this isn't just for beauty this is basic hygiene people to me there is no greater feeling than climbing into bed with freshly washed sheets and i get much better sleep knowing that I'm not gonna wake up the next morning with a bunch of breakouts. So the fourth beauty hygiene tip I have for y'all is to clean or replace your makeup applicators and tools. I used to be a beauty blender girl and I would hold off on replacing them for as long as possible because they're expensive. Because sponges are extremely porous, they collect so much bacteria and they are impossible to sterilize. Even if you wash your beauty blender every day, since you can't access the inside of it, bacteria will just continue to grow in here. So my tip is, if you use sponges religiously and cannot do your makeup without them, use disposable ones or replace them every few months like you know you should do. Some other things you should also be cleaning are your eyelash curlers and your eyebrow spoolies. These do not get washed often enough, but they can be the dirtiest things in our makeup bags. So you should always remember to wash them. And if you use a cushion foundation, you need to be washing the cushion sponge too. This touches your skin too, so if you use it and then put it back, like it's just collecting bacteria. And now now I've saved the biggest beauty hygiene tip for last. If you only got one thing from this video, it's this. Stop touching your face. I know it's hard because sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it, but please, please, please don't touch your face. Our hands have so much bacteria on them. So when you touch your face, rub your eyes, pick your nose, you are transferring those germs onto your skin. I always wash my hands anytime I'm about to touch my face, like before I do my makeup or my skincare. I personally like to do my hair before I do my makeup. So after I finish styling it, I'll then go back and wash my hands again before I do my makeup because the products we use and touch can also be dirty. This also goes for other products like body lotion, especially if you have oily skin because you don't wanna be introduced Reducing more oils onto your face. And this tip isn't just about your hands, but it includes everything else that can come in contact with your skin. Pillowcases, glasses, hats, masks, your phone. These things have so much bacteria, so you definitely don't want them touching your skin. And those are my five beauty hygiene habits that will leave you glowing, smelling good, and feeling fresh. If you guys have your own hygiene tips, drop them in the comments so, you know, we can share the knowledge. I hope you guys found this helpful and applicable for your own daily routines. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.